ISO Glory community, you have arrived to the first chapter of many in ISO Glory stories. Today, you will witness something that will make you feel many things. Shall we begin? Shall we start? Welcome to the ISO Glory journey. First up, we have our tomato frog, temporary lame creme brulee, family to the microhylidae or narrow mouth frog. They can be found in the deepest parts of the rainforest of Madagascar and loved by many amphibian keepers, even at ISO Glory. Just look at how cute he is. And yes, I said he. Tomato frogs are best known for their striking colors. Males tend to have a distinct yellow and orange coloration, as we can see right on creme brulee. But you know what's better than one tomato frog? Try two. This my Isoglory family is our female tomato frog, Cherry Souffle. I think it's very clear where the name inspiration came from. Just look at her skin. Did you know tomato frogs can release a toxic secretion through their skin? So although not extremely harmful to us, it's best if we don't handle them continually. As you can see, Cherry Souffle is actually inflating herself. They often do this in the wild to deter predators. Don't worry, Cherry Souffle, we're not gonna eat ya. Today is actually Rainforest Day. So all the rainforest amphibian enclosures get soaked, almost to a floodlight state. <laughs> but I'm afraid the light side of this story is coming to an end. We are isopod fans, but our isopods are going to be in grave danger very soon. Iso Glory fans, it's feeding time. And today on the menu is our beloved powder orange isopods. And although it's extremely hard to do this, it has to be done. Coming from a peaceful colony, look at them taking cover in their new war zone, their new ecosystem. But I'm afraid I made a grave mistake. Dropping them into the war zone, I didn't realize I dropped them so close to the water hole. So I did what I thought was best and quickly grabbed a leaf and scooped as many as I could out. Every isopod, deserves a fair chance. And even though they will eventually turn prey to our tomato frogs, they do deserve to try to have at least a decent life before their inedible perish. I saw the isopods quickly as I removed the water, swim up to close shore. But the ones that have already reached land have seen danger right in the eye. Cherry Souffle and Creme Boulet wasted no time in the desolation of our beloved powder orange isopods. Some of our isopods were smart enough to not even try to cross the paths of our tomato frogs, but others, not so much. I was still worried about what happened earlier at the watering hole, but as I checked back, I was afraid of what I saw. The water didn't seep into the dirt as I hoped, and you even saw some isopods looking into it for their fallen family members. Or so I thought. Do you see him? That isopod under the water. Our isoglory fans know isopods do have gills. However, Isopods are terrestrial crustaceans, meaning we find them on land. But even with that being the case, there's a powder orange isopod underwater right before our eyes. Land isopods have a special adaptation allowing them to live on land. And for what I know, what I've researched, 
they will drown if submerged in water for way too long. But as you and I see, this isopod in particular is having no issues. What do you think, Isoglory family? Do you have any ideas how this is possible? In further evaluation, I even noticed some dwarf whites underwater. Very new to me. Still, I wanted to be safe. Just because this is a new observation doesn't mean I should extend it longer than it needs to be. So, just to be safe, I put some sticks in the water to make sure they have a safe and easy access way to get out as soon as possible. Still, as I observed in confusion, I still saw no isopod in a rush to get out of the water. Could they be remembering their past? Or following the path of their ancestors foraging in the deep sea floor? I'm not sure. To be honest with you, I was still pretty uneasy about them being underwater for so long. So I got a broken leaf and scooped up as many as I could, just to be sure. Check this guy out. He's so close to the surface, but he's not trying to break it. I started to get worried again. I wondered if the surface or water surface was too tough for them to break. As we witnessed before, springtails had no issues floating on top of the water film, but isopods sink. So was it even possible for them to break the water surface? So I waited, wondering if this little guy can show us that it's quite possible to break the water surface. But Isoglory family, I'm not sure. I won't lie to you, my heart was beating in these moments. The isopod has been underwater for a while now, and now he's not moving. So I quickly went into action and turned the little rock over. And what do I know? He's trying to go back into the water. Can someone explain this to me? I was baffled, unsure, and could not understand what I was seeing. But one thing I know for sure, terrestrial isopods cannot be underwater for too long. So, I did what I thought was best. I removed him completely from the water, and to my surprise, he was using his ear pods. Now, ear pods is the sixth and last pair of the abdominal appendages of lobsters and related crustaceans like isopods, but they use that to drink water, and he just came from being submerged in water. This was really new to me. And just like that, he kept and continued to walk away. Well, Isoglory fans, I think I can say this with confidence. Today, for it to be the 
very first journey we have on our ISO Glory channel, it was definitely a doozy. So many different experiences and so much different learning. Do you have any idea what the isopods were doing underwater for so long? Leave in the comments below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for new adventures. This is the Isoglory channel. Thank you for tuning in. And I can't wait to see you for the next video.